Hello everyone and welcome to Yankee Stadium for the third and final game of this early AL East matchup between the New York Yankees and the visiting Toronto Blue Jays. It's been a great series so far. Both teams have taken one game, so that makes today a Sunday, cloudy Sunday here in New York, the day of the rubber match. And we'll see J Hap oh, we'll see J Hap against Trent Thornton today, and J Hap, the former J, steps on the mound. Six foot five left-hander, 37 years old, picked way back in 2004. Blue Jays fans are very familiar with this guy. He's got a four-pitch mix, fastball, sinker, slider, and changeup. His fastball is his number one pitch, and the key for him today is going to be inducing some weak contact, but Hap has been known in his career to be able to miss some bats. And we thank you for joining us today on the Virtual Jays Network. As that one is drilled in the left field, the first pitch of the game, Bo Bichette. Gets a base hit to left, and <laughs> welcome to the start of this one. Uh, my name's Jackson Farrow. I'm joined by Liam Carruthers in the booth, and what a start to this one, eh, Liam? Yeah, and maybe Montoya sent Bichette up there with take a minute to find your pitch, and I guess Bichette thought he was talking about a New York minute. Ambushes that first pitch into left field, and that's a great start for Bichette, who's had some early struggles. And now we see Kevin Biggio playing second base today, steps in, and yeah, Bo Bichette yesterday went 0 for 2. He hit into an error in the sixth and had two walks, both in the first and second. So he was able to reach base a couple times yesterday. He does it again today. So now we see Kevin Biggio, who's hitting 200 on the year, takes a ball outside from Hap. It's a 2-0 count now. Yeah, and if this were any other year, I think that these Blue Jays would be a little bit more familiar, but with so much turnaround in this young Jays lineup, a lot of these guys are unfamiliar, so expect a little bit of uh, patience, a little bit of uh, work in the count from these Blue Jays hitters. A slow day for Biggio yesterday. He played second and hit second, uh, but he went 0 for 4 with a walk as well, so quiet day for him, uh, but you imagine we'll see more... Uh, you know, better offensive production from Biggio today, perhaps, although he is against a, a pretty good lefty. Is that one is drilled down the first baseline foul. It's a 2 2 count. This will be a good test in uh, the young Biggio's career. Is, as a left handed batter, it's really tough when you see that ball coming out of that left handed arm slot. And if Biggio can put together some good at bats today, it's going to do great for his confidence. That one's hit down in left field, and it'll get there. So, two pretty identical singles to start this game as both Bichette and Biggio reach. A good job spraying that one there, using the whole field from Biggio. A very quick start as the, maybe the new killer bees of Bo Bichette and Kevin Biggio have got things going here for Lourdes Gurriel Jr., who's had a pretty decent start to the year so far. Swings and misses on that first pitch offering from half there. And yeah, so the first runners reach for the Jays here. And uh, Gurriel yesterday uh, went 0 for 4. Now, he did reach on a fielder's choice in the second and had a single in the seventh, but three strikeouts for Gurriel Jr. yesterday. So we'll see what he can deliver today as he drives that one down the third base line, but it's foul. In his last four games, he's been 5 for 15, and, and really being able to power this lineup again to generate some offense and get on for the power hitters lower in the lineup. 0-2 pitch taken just low. A really gutsy take from Gurriel Jr. there. That one could have gone either way. It'll be a 1-2 count now. It's been a little bit of feast or famine so far for both lineups. If a guy isn't producing, then it's probably because he's striking out or grounding into some weak, uh, weak outs. And Gurriel Jr. been known to make some solid contact in, in a big spot here. Unfortunately, goes down looking, and he knows that he got a pitch to hit there. And the struggles continue so far for Gurriel in this series. Call out there on strikes. And... Yeah, and, and Thursday he went uh, 0 for 3 with a walk as well. So kind of a slower series for Gurriel uh, here in the Bronx. But now Vlad Guerrero Jr. steps in. And listen, he's, been, he's really starting to heat up now. He's hitting 310 on the year now, two home runs. And he had one yesterday uh, right in the fifth inning that uh, you know, preserved the Blue Jays' lead. But, man, he's showing off that power. He's had some really uh, deep contact in this series so far, hasn't he? Oh, for sure. And, you know, the first two games weren't so kind to him, but since then he's riding an eight-game hitting streak uh, coming into this one. And obviously hitting 310, he mashed a ball from Loisaga into the left field seats yesterday. Guerrero Jr. 
putting up the production so far that Blue Jays fans were expecting in his rookie season. Guerrero Jr., a player who you know, he might not... He'll have his hot and cold moments, as any major league player does, but when he gets hot and he gets chugging, that momentum just keeps on building as that one's driven into deep left field. Talkman ranging back, trying to get there on the warning track, and he'll watch it sail into the seat. So a three-run home run in the first inning for Vlad Guerrero Jr., and the Blue Jays are up 3-0 to start this game. Man, call the New York Fire Department. This guy has been hot to the touch. Guerrero Jr. works himself into a good count, drives in three early runs against J.A. Happ. Obviously, Guerrero Jr. much more comfortable hitting left-handed batters as any right-hander is. As you can see here, turns the hips, great extension out in front of that ball, but Guerrero so strong, just able to drive that thing into the seats. Yeah, and just as I was mentioning it, <laughs> that's been a common theme in this series. Whenever we talk about something, it usually happens. Uh, but Guerrero Jr. building off of that momentum, and man, he is hot right now, and that makes it a nine-game hitting streak. A couple home runs in this series, and yeah, he's looked uh, he's looked excellent. As we see Randall Gritchuk, number five hitter, he's looked great too, hitting 417 this season. Had a great series against the Reds, and he'll be in center field for the Jays once again today. He swings and misses on that pitch right up the middle. It's an 0-2 count. And I think what's sort of gone unnoticed so far for Gritchick this year is that his defense hasn't been lagging behind. Obviously a little bit different for him, used to playing the corner outfield. He's got center field today and has so far in the season, and he's looked great. Gritchick two for four on the day yesterday with an RBI, a couple singles. We'll see if he can build on that today against the lefty Hap, who's struggled early on here. One-two pitch. That one's fouled off high and over into the seats, but... So a tough start for Jay Happ, the former Jay. Uh, but, you know, this is a guy who's a vet. You know, this is his 14th season in the bigs. A, a three-run shot isn't going to phase him early. He just needs to recover now. Yet, in a starch contrast from Jordan Montgomery, who we saw yesterday, Happ has been in these situations before, went through some struggles in his own career. He knows how to work out of jams like this. That one's fouled off, so the count will remain 1-2. Is Happ now up to 20 pitches in the first inning here. Here's the one-two offering. Swung on foul to pass the third base line. And so it'll remain a one-two count as Urshela was there to field it. But here's the one-two offering. That one's low, and it'll even up the count at two now. We're seeing a real battle from Grichuk here in this at-bat, trying to generate something on, with one out. As that one is fouled off past the third base line. Gritchick putting together a very solid at-bat here, and Hap, who already has uh, quite a few pitches on this inning, he's had to throw a couple more because Gritchick's fouling these balls off, but misses on that one, and that'll be a pretty productive walk back to the dugout, I'd say. Batting fifth. And a swing and a miss on that pitch, so Hap gets his second strikeout of the inning to retire Gritchick. So two away now. Uh, still a 3-0 ball game, though, and if you... Are just joining us on the Virtual Jays Network. You might have missed the start of this one. So Bichette and Biggio both reach on back-to-back -back singles to start this game. And then Guerrero Jr. launches a three-run shot earlier in this inning. So now Teoscar Hernandez steps up, the number six hitter, DHing today. So he gets a day off, usually playing right field. But Anthony Alford slots in the lineup in right field today. Yeah, and Montoya goes with Alford as you have the lefty on the mound and uh, Derek Fisher, obviously a left-handed bat, sees right-handed pitching much more often, sees it a whole lot better, so Alford gets another chance here in a favorable matchup. And that one's fouled off down the first baseline. It's a 2-1 to one count to Hernandez. And so look to keep this inning going for the Blue Jays, a productive one so far. It's a 2-2 two -two count now as that one gets in there for a strike. And here's Hap looking for his third strike out of the inning. And that one misses low. It's a full count now. Good take by Hernandez there. Pitch number 30 coming up here. It's a bad sign for the Yankees, who saw some pretty uh, deep work from their bullpen yesterday. That outside offering would have been ball four, but it's fouled off by Hernandez. So Jay Happ up to 30 pitches, looking for his third strikeouts. And that one is drilled down the left field line, but it will sail foul. So we're seeing some battles here from the middle of the lineup. Whether it's Guerrero Jr. battling and then delivering a three-run shot, Grichuk battling, and now Hernandez as well, as that one once again fouled off here. My goodness, you know, 
Eight, uh, eight pitches in that bat. This will be nine coming up here. Hap has missed a couple of bats. He's got the two strikeouts, but he's also given up some foul balls. Hernandez 0 for 8 in this series. Now 0 for 9 with that one, but Vladimir Guerrero Jr. hits a three-run shot here in the first inning in the Bronx in the third game of the series to put the Jays up early, 3-0. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bronx as we see Trent Thornton tow the rubber for his second start of the season. Thornton struggled a little bit in his first time out. The only Jays starter so far to not record a quality start on the season gets his second go of things here. Um, it's obviously no easy test against this Yankee lineup and uh, he'll just have to be able to work his pitches into spots where he's going to induce some weak contact because Trent Thornton can blow it by guys, but against the lineup as talented as this, you just got to hope that these guys make a couple mistakes. And in Trent Thornton's first start of the year, it was against Cincinnati uh, back in Toronto earlier this week, and he went five and a third, allowed two earned runs, one walk, two hits, and five strikeouts, but ended up losing that one. Four to one, uh, but you know I, I think one thing that to remember is that with Thornton, it's he pitched a lot of innings last year. He was kind of bat baptized by fire a little bit last year. Pitched over 150 innings, really the only healthy starter in the rotation last year for the Jays, and that was in his rookie season. Now he comes in, delivers a leadoff strikeout to the number one hitter for the Yankees, DJ Lemayhew today. Should mention Thornton didn't take the loss in that game. I believe it was Shinya Maguchi after allowing that to run at Joey Votto shot. But nonetheless, not a great outing for Thornton. And I think one of the issues was that second time through the order, he really struggled. Yeah, and hitters are always a little bit more familiar the deeper they get into ball games. And Thornton has to make sure that as he gets deeper into this lineup and, you know, things start to roll over, he's changing his locations, not attacking guys the same way. And Gardner grounds out quickly there. So all of a sudden, there's two away to start the first inning, and only six pitches thrown by Thornton. This is exactly what you want from uh, your your starter, especially in a game like this where you know you've, you're in the middle of a road trip. You know you're kind of a younger starter, your fifth starter, a guy who you're trying to get as many innings as you can. A, a good first inning would really build some confidence. One zero count to make that a one one count to Torres, who's had a great start to the season. Hitting 310, and he's had a great series as well. Uh, you know, yesterday, he only goes one for three, but as he gets a base hit there on a 1 1 pitch from Thorne, so a two out single for Glaber Torres, who continues to do a good job of reaching. He's got a hit in every single game so far in this series, and he's been pulling the ball quite a bit. And I think maybe in the next time up, I wouldn't be surprised to see Charlie Montoya start to move the defense around a little bit to try to negate some of that contact. As that one's in there for a strike to number four hitter Gary Sanchez. Yeah, Torres in game one of this series on Thursday, two for three with a walk and two RBI. And as I mentioned yesterday, went one for four. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, still a very impactful player, and he's had a good start, as I mentioned. But Gary Sanchez now. And yesterday he went one for three. He's in a 1-1 count now with a runner on. And he takes that one inside and so it'll be a two to one count now to Sanchez the catcher. The Yankees have not had the production from Sanchez that they were expecting this season so far. Swing and a miss there evens up the count at two a good low pitch there from Thornton looking to get out of this inning after allowing a single to Torres and that one's fouled off Sanchez remains alive 2-2 now. Sanchez just hasn't looked comfortable in his at-bat so far against the Blue Jays obviously had a hat trick in that game on Thursday and just has really looked off balance against these guys. Yeah, and one for three yesterday with a walk. So we saw some positive signs, uh, but he'll have to continue that. Again, a slow start to the season for him, just batting 143. And he once again fouls that one off. He's in a full count, but quite the battle now between Sanchez and Thornton here. And sometimes this is what you need. If you're not really going with the bat, sometimes just working the pitcher a little bit, making him throw some pitches is what you expect from a, a guy who's struggling. 
So that went over to first. Drury is able to field it and get back to the bag for the third out. So it remains a 3-0 ball game as we head to the second inning here on a cloudy day in the Bronx. And welcome back to Blue Jays Baseball on the Virtual Jays Network. Jackson Farrell joined today by Liam Crothers. And, and we see Brandon Drury, who's off to a really good start to this season, hitting 375, a couple homers. And yesterday he had a, a home run and a couple singles going three for four. And the, the whole bottom of the lineup was excellent. The 789 hitters, Shaw, Drury, and Jansen uh, combining four. Let's see, one, two, three, four home runs yesterday. Goodness me. So we'll see what Drury and Co. can do today. But he grounds out to first. Void there to make the play. So one away now. Yeah, and now stepping up, it'll be Danny Jansen. This guy has been on fire so far this year. Comes into this one hitting 345. As you can see, he's 10 for 29 in the season. He's got three home runs. Two of them came yesterday. Only five RBIs, though. And that's probably as a result of him hitting so low in the lineup. Takes that pitch low and inside for ball number one. And, uh, you know, familiar faces happen, Jansen. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. They, Jansen as a catcher would have kind of known a little bit of what Hap's all about as he was, you know, they were in the organization at the same time. And imagine they, they may know each other. I'm sure Hap knows a lot of people in this organization. But, you know, Jansen's such a hot start. And, and I think a lot of that has just been his approach at the plate. He takes there now 3 0 count to the number eight hitter, Jansen, with Alfred on deck. And I think one thing for Hap, it's going to be important today is uh, for the rest of this game, is try to get some quick innings. But he won't be able to have too quick of an inning here as that one is a one out walk to Danny Jansen. Continues his great start to the year. And I think that at bat speaks volumes. You mentioned the hot start from Danny Jansen. That's a four-pitch walk from Jay Happ, a guy who's a veteran, a guy who's not really scared of anyone at this point in his career, but I guess discretion the better part of Valor as he walks him on four straight. Yeah, and so now it'll be Anthony Alford at the plate, who on Thursday, in game one of this series, went one for three with a single. We'll see what he can do today. Pretty good start to the year for him. He's been hitting mainly in the nine hole uh, and kind of more of a defensive player as he's very valuable in right field with his athleticism he's in a 1-1 count now we'll see what he can do today takes that pitch inside now two to one fisher's been uh one of those guys that struggled to get in the lineup and with alfred in here against the lefty he's been very impressive so far looks to continue that this uh this oh. afternoon yeah now he's in a 3-1 count so j Hap getting into some tough counts here early on and especially in this inning so we'll see uh, if he can maybe get out of it or perhaps even up the count as he tries to here with this pitch. That one's in there for a strike, and it's a full count now. And Alfred a little bit too selective there. That was a pretty good pitch to hit if he would have been swinging. But early in the game, you know, you want your batters to get a feel for what a guy's throwing up there, so the next time through the order, they have a better idea of how to hit him. Here's the payoff pitch. That one is called a strike on the inside part of the plate. Alfred doesn't really like it. But four strikeouts now for Hap on the day. And Hap a great job there battling back from a 3-1 count through two sort of gimme pitches. Those are pretty much uh, as obvious a strike as you're going to get here in the big leagues. And Alfred just couldn't pull the trigger. Yeah, it looked like he was just trying to get on base. And, and you know, a 3-1 count trying to get on base is obviously makes a lot of sense. That's something you want to do. But I, I think with Alfred taking those last two pitches, he was definitely not expecting them to be... Again, very ripe for the take. In two pitches, he definitely could have swung on and hit, but he strikes out looking. So now it'll be Bo Bichette who fouls that one off and an 0-2 count now. And he's 1-for-1 one one on the day with a single in the first. Here's the 0-2 offering from Hap. And that one's high. It'll be ball one in the count now. And Bichette playing shortstop. Once again today, as he has all season long. Although in game one, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. did a good job of replacing him at short. 
playing some good defense. And that one is well inside, evens up the count now at two as Hap approaches 50 pitches here just in the second inning. Hap missed his spot there, obviously not trying to throw at Bichette. And this will be his 50th pitch. He's working himself into trouble that he could probably avoid as now Bobachet has worked this thing to a 3-2 count. And for a guy who walked twice yesterday, this has got to be a very, very good series so far for Bichette. Full count for Bichette. Two out. And that one is taken inside. Call a strike. So back-to-back -back inside pitches from Hap. Get strikeouts looking on both Alfred and Bichette. Remains 3-0 here as we head to the bottom of the second. And welcome back to Yankee Stadium. Here is it's a 3-0 Blue Jays lead off of Vlad Guerrero Jr. three-run shot in the first. As Luke Voigt steps up to the plate, hitting 308 on the year. A hot start for him. And a home run in this young season as well. He's playing first base today. He swings on that first pitch, but it'll be fouled off. Voigt is a guy that... You know, obviously more familiar with the bat than with the glove, but he's also played some very good defense so far in the series. As that one's hit right up the middle, over to Biggio in the shift, and he makes the play. One away now. And we mentioned the hot start so far for Voigt. Eight hits so far on the year. Uh, obviously, sort of hitting into that shift, it's a little bit discouraging because against any other defense, that's right back up the middle, and you're standing on first with none out, but... Such as baseball in 2020. Thornton deals that one in an excellent pitch right there in the lower corner of the plate. So it'll be an 0-1 count now to Mike Talkman, number six hitter. A good start to the season for him. He's playing left field today. And here's the 0-1 pitch to Talkman. That one's swung on but fouled off into the seats. Just taking a look at the defensive alignment for the Jays today. So Bichette at short. Biggio goes back to second base. Guerrero Jr. in left. Guerrero Jr., not DHing today. He'll be playing third, back playing some defense. Grichuk in center. Hernandez off his feet, DHing. Brennan Drury slots in at first, replacing Travis Shaw. Danny Jansen catching. And Anthony Alford in right field. Having Brennan Drury is a great guy because it plays a lot of utility positions on that infield, and you can put him pretty much wherever you feel like. And that one's hit down the left field line. Pascal Guerrero Jr., kind of a perfect hit for Talkman there. That one just sneaks inside the line. So a single for the left fielder there. When it's going good, it's going great. That pitch is in on the hands, but, uh, you know, typically you see that ball get rolled over to the third baseman, but Talkman got a pretty good piece of it. It tucks itself inside of the line, and he's standing on first now, and just a tremendous start so far for the season. Miguel Andahar steps in and singles over in the left. Oh, and there's an error there from Guriel Jr. Let's it get behind him. So now Talkman able to advance to third. Uh-oh. One away now, runners on first and third after the Andrew single and the Guriel Jr. error. You get to hear the crack of the bat all the way up here. Andahar went up there looking to ambush Thornton early in this game, and he mashed that thing along the ground into left field. And so now it'll be Gio Urshela, the third baseman, hitting 241 on the season. And now he's got a couple runners on for him here, a chance to drive in some RBI and get the Yankees on the board here. And that one's inside, and it'll be fouled up. Jory has a read on it, and he'll get there to make the play. So two away and two on now for Thornton as he tries to battle his way out of a little bit of a tough situation here in the second. Just a little bit of a of Gio Urshela trying to do too much. Off a fly ball there would have scored you a run, but uh, tried to almost a, de a defensive swing on a high and inside pitch and pops it uh, weakly over to Jury at first. Urshela 0 for 3 with a walk yesterday. And now Clint Frazier, who's, pitched, or who's played in all three games in this series, had a home run yesterday. And still a slow start for him, but he's able when he's able to get a hold of that ball and rip it, he sure can. He's got some serious power in that bat. 0-2 count now to him. It and a tough day at the plate for him yesterday. Came up in a huge spot, got as much of the ball as he could, but just managed to find a glove for the final out. A couple walks on Thursday as well. And we'll see what he can do here now. He's in a one-two count with a couple runners on. A good chance. We've been talking all series, Liam, about this outfield battle with all the Yankees uh, being injured. 
Um, you know, a guy like Clint Frazier has a chance, and he's been starting in this series, but if his bat can't get going, he won't be in there long as he strikes out there. So Trent Thornton able to get out a bit of a tough situation, a bit of a jam with runners on first and third. And so it remains a 3-0 ball game as we head to the third in the Bronx. Hello, everyone, and welcome back on the Virtual Jays Network. Jackson Fair alongside Liam Crothers. As we kick things off in the third now, it'll be Kevin Biggio, the number two hitter for the Jays. He hit a single in the first, came around to score as part of that Vlad Guerrero Jr. three-run homer that uh, has given us our current score. It's 3 nothing Yank or 3 nothing Blue Jays, rather. And so Biggio steps in 5 for 21 on the season, hitting 238, playing some real good defense. Uh, and what's going to be the key for Biggio, do you think, Liam, to kind of stay in the lineup this season and stay consistent? I think he needs to build off of the performance he had last season. Obviously, it's well documented that Biggio exercises a good eye up at the plate. And uh, as a left-handed batter, you're going to face a lot more righties than you do lefties. And uh, when you get those chances against left-handed pitchers like he's getting today, uh, I love the way that he exercised some uh, opposite field ability. He shortened up and poked one. Uh, into left field to keep that inning going. 3-1 three. Three, count. You mentioned his good plate as the plays in. 3-1 count as he tries to reach base for the second time today. And Hap tries to avoid allowing a leadoff runner, which he did in the first. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed there. High heat gets Biggio to swing. It's a full count. Man, as a left-handed hitter, that thing comes up at you. Your eyes light up because if you can get to that thing, that's going to find its way into the third deck especially in this ballpark, as that one is flown out to right center field. Gardner playing center has a good read on it and makes the play. So the leadoff runner is retired. Now, the left fielder. And now we see Lourdes Gurriel Jr. step up to the plate. He struck out looking in the first inning, and in this series, he's one for nine. So kind of a... Not the best series from your number three hitter in in uh, in this one in Yankee Stadium on the first road trip of the season. As he takes the first pitch in there for a ball. Maybe the performance with the bat is starting to trickle into his play in the field because uh, Gurriel Jr. is a pretty short-handed left fielder, but that, uh, that hard hit from Andahar in the last inning managed to find its way under his glove and it allowed Talkman to advance to third. Thornton was able to work out of it, but that's something you want to iron out here early in the season. Yeah, and especially for a guy, Gurriel Jr., who defense is a big <laughs> discussion point with him. Yes, he's versatile, but where does he fit in defensively? You want his bat in the lineup, you think. Maybe not in this series so far, but you know, issues like that in the field are not going to help Montoyo make easy decisions. Uh, but nonetheless, Gurriel Jr. has looked fantastic defensively this season, and those things happen. 2-2 two -two count as that one's driven foul back towards the seat, so it remains a 2-2 two -two count. Man, the Jays are really running up Jay Happ's pitch count here. This will be his 63rd pitch. Here it is. That one is driven into center field. Gardner looking back, ranging, and he makes the play. And he's got such a such great range out in the field, and he retires Gurriel Jr., another fly out to center, so two away now. Brett Gardner, obviously, uh, you know, a guy who's played a whole lot in this ballpark. It's pretty easy for him at this point to figure out where the ball's going, especially off the bat. And now we see the home run hitter from the first inning. Vlad Guerrero Jr. steps in, hitting number four today. He's had a great series, a great start to the season so far. In his career, he's two for 11 against Jay Happ, but you know what? He just dinged him in the first, took him... Took him uh, deep for three runs. We'll see what he can do in this at-bat. And that's in there for a strike. Evens up the count now at one apiece. And here's the 1-1 pitch. That one, they're going to say he went. He broke the plane, so it's a 1-2 count as Jay Happ tries to get a bit more of a clean inning if he can in this one. And here's the 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss there, so a strikeout for... Hap gets a 1-2-3 inning for him off the 2-3-4 hitters for the Jays. As we head to the bottom of the third, it remains 3-0. 
in New York. Love one and welcome back as we see DJ LeMahieu playing second base once again for the Yankees step up to the plate. And on Thursday, in game one of the series, he went 0 for 3 with a walk. And yesterday, he goes 0 for 4. So, kind of a, and he was leading off yesterday as well. So, kind of a slow series for him, um, for the, the journeyman now. And spent some time in Colorado, and he's come over to the Yankees. He's been very productive for them. They've gotten great value, especially uh, with some injuries to their other uh, you know, hitters. They've gotten good production in, in recent times, especially last season, 26 home runs and 102 RBI for LeMahieu. He's in a 2-0 count now. As he swings on that one, grounds it over to third. Guerrero Jr. there to make the play. And he'll retire the leadoff hitter, LeMahieu, who's now 0-2 in this one. LeMahieu at the top of the lineup. You know, he starts off the bottom of the first, and he starts off the bottom of the third. And obviously, Aaron Boone might think about tinkering with the lineup because you want that guy in the leadoff spot to get on base to set the table for your 2, 3, and 4 hitters. But... LeMahieu has struggled mightily so far in this series to get on base. And perhaps the, uh, a guy he would look at to lead off may be this man, Brett Gardner, who hitting number two today is 0 for 1. And a, a decent start to the season. But I think the biggest thing is yesterday he had a solo shot in the first and then a walk in the sixth. Looked pretty good. And he's played great defense as well. Uh, again, with this outfield having well, all the injuries with... Aaron Hicks, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton. A guy like Brett Gardner, a veteran, is very important for this team as he pops that one up, and Guerrero Jr. comes in from third and makes the play. So two out now. You know, and more than the bat, you have to think about what Brett Gardner means to this franchise. He's the longest tenured Yankee on this team, and throughout his whole career, he's been a table setter, whether that's at the bottom of the lineup or the top of the lineup. Never really been a guy that slots in the 4-5-6 hole, but... Always had that consistent defense and is a tremendous rallying presence in that Yankee clubhouse. Gardner free agent at season's end. It'll be fascinating to see how that all plays out. But Gleyber Torres at the plate now as he steps in and takes a first pitch strike. And here's the 0-1 pitch. That one misses outside, so it's a 1-1 count. And Torres had a single in the first. He's looked great this series. He's hitting 333 on the season. And he drills that one into deep left, but it'll sail into the seats foul. Yeah, and if Torres comes up with a hit here, call it a hunch, but I think it might find its way through the left side of the infield. <laughs> and uh, 38 home runs last season for the young shortstop, the Phenom prospect. 2-2 count, he swings and misses there. T Thornton gets him on the low and outside pitch. So three up, three down in the third for Thornton. As we head to the fourth, it remains 3-0 Blue Jays. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Bronx. It's Randall Gritchett stepping in, the number five hitter. He struck out in the first. As J-Hab deals his 68th pitch of the game. That one's driven into deep left center field. Looks like Gardner might have a read on it. Oh, it goes off the wall. And he fields and throws it in, but not before Gritchuk is able to reach second on a leadoff double. And more so than Randy Two Bags coming up big with his fifth double of the season. I want to say that's a great job from Brett Gardner because at some point you can see he slows up the run, almost knows that he can't get to that ball straight up, so he decides to play it off of the wall and gets a good relay in because Gritchick is a guy with a lot of speed out there and he could have found his way to third base. And now that one's hit up to second. LeMahieu fields and throws out Hernandez there quickly. So two pitches only in this inning for half, and he's got a runner on third as Gritchick advanced on the play, and one out. That's a productive out from Teoscar Hernandez, is a guy who struggled like he has in the series. Sometimes you got to play a little bit of small ball and set up uh, these <laughs> actually big bats at the bottom of the order for the Blue Jays lineup. Yeah, and Drury grounded out to first in the second inning. We'll see what he can do here. As we see Jonathan 
Loisiga warming up in the bullpen for the Yankees. He may have to come in with Hops. Pitch count getting pretty high only in the fourth and being down 3 0, although all runs scored on one hit. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll see what he can do here against the bottom of the lineup as that one looked like it might have been in there for a strike, but it's called ball, so it's a 1 1 count to Drury. And you mentioned this bottom of the lineup doing damage. They had a ton of home runs yesterday. Uh, and not so productive today, but only in one time through the order. We'll see what they can do now as it's Drury, Jantz, and Alford. And the one-two pitch now to Drury. Swung on ground right up the middle and hits Hap and goes into center field. So that'll drive in Grichuk. And it'll be a single for Drury. So in RBIs, that one you know, kind of careened off Hap's leg there. A bit of a confusing play. And Drury does a great job of taking that ball right back up the middle. I think it actually takes a strange bounce off of the mound as Hap managed to uh, get his way out of that. But sometimes as a pitcher, if you can knock that ball down, you might actually end up saving a run for yourself, but just self-preservation at that point to get out of the way. Yeah, you're right about that, Liam. It actually didn't hit Hap. It looked like it did, but it just bounced off the mound kind of funny. So Hap gets lucky and avoids that one there, as those are never fun to have, a comebacker. And it goes into center field, so Drury picks up a single and an RBI. It's a 4-0 ball game now as Gritch comes around to score. So Danny Jansen steps in, and it's an 0-2 count. It's a great job by Hap here. As uh, in Jansen's last at-bat, he was walked on four straight pitches, but Hap's coming right after him here with, uh, you know, two quick strikes, and with his pitch count as high as it is, he's really trying to work his way through this uh, bottom of the lineup who's been so good so far in this season. Yeah, Danny Jansen, of course, you know, two home runs in yesterday's contest. He went two for four, and those two homers were massive as they helped the Jays win that one. And it's an 0-2 count now with one away and one on to the catcher. That was drilled but foul, so it'll remain 0-2. Got a great piece of that one. Just jumped on it a little bit too early. Might have been thinking fastball. Got something a little bit slower and caught him out on his front foot. And here's the 0-2 pitch. That one is once again fouled off down the third base line. So Jansen on the season, 10 for 29, so a 345 average. Three home runs and five RBI. What a great start, especially from the bottom of the lineup. He's hitting number eight and grounds that one up the middle. That'll reach center field for a base hit. So first and second, one away, back-to-back -back singles now from the seven, eight hitters for the Jays. And that's what you love to see from these Jays hitters, taking that ball where it's thrown. They're taking those pitches right back up the middle, making a lot of solid contact. And this will be Hap's 80th pitch of the game so far, and he's only worked through three and a third. As Alfred drives that one in a deep left, but it'll sail into the seats, or just prior to the seats for a foul. But Alfred, four for 11 this season. Uh, so a good start for him. He's got a couple RBI as well. He's been able to hit when he needs to with runners in scoring position. He's got the chance now, first and second. And that 0-1 turns into a 1-1. And as I mentioned, the last three games, he's got a double and a couple RBI. That was back in the Cincinnati series. But with a runner in scoring position here, he'd love to add to that. So let's see what he can do. As that one is fouled off, it's a one-two count. Yeah, and you wonder how long the leash is going to be here for Hap as they've got Loisaga up in the pen, but he pitched quite a bit yesterday. But you can't leave Hap out there to give up a, a few more runs because this thing may end up out of reach very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Not a great start for Hap here by any means. And, you know, he's a guy who, like we mentioned earlier on, he's a veteran, so he's not phased by these things, but... You know, he's, he's, he's had a tough start here, and I can't imagine he'll go too much longer as Aaron Boone really uh, needs better starting pitching, better pitching in general in this game. It's already a 4 nothing game, and the Jays look kind of like they did yesterday, being able to get a lot of production from kind of the middle to bottom end of their lineup. It's a full count to Alford. And that one's drilled into right field. Looks like it might get down. Oh, and Frazier... Not able to get it, it bounces right in front of him, but it's thrown to second for the force out. I mean, Frazier, not a guy who's known for his range in the outfield, does a great job to pick that thing up on a hop and fire an absolute strike over to second base to get the force out. And Hap, probably a little discouraged when he saw that ball fall, but I think uh, the throw to second makes up for it. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was a tough situation for Jansen at first, who was thrown out there because, you know, he, he obviously couldn't start really running to second if Frazier was going to make that play. Uh, but the ball just drops in front of him, so then Jansen kind of doubled up there. Uh, but nonetheless, still first and third now, two out. As Drury advances to third on the play. We'll see if Bichette can perhaps drive him in here with two out. And that one's hit up towards Torres at short, and he'll run to the bag, and a very close call there as there was a race between Alfred and Torres. But Torres wins it this time. The Blue Jays tack on a run. It's a 4 0 ball game here in the Bronx. As we see, Gary Sanchez now come to the plate. Welcome back in the Virtual Jays Network. This game is moving quickly. It's a four nothing ball game. The Jays have done a good Jays have done a good job uh, generating some offense for their fifth starter Trent Thornton, who's in a one zero count now to the catcher Sanchez. And there's the pitch. That one is driven into center field. Grichuk deep in the shift isn't going to be able to get there. So we see the defensive shift in the outfield very uh, heavy, a very aggressive shift. And Grichuk, uh, it was far out into left center and not able to make what would have been potentially a routine play. Interesting starch contrast there because the defense has to play the percentages. Sanchez is typically a very strong power hitter who's going to pull the ball. But in a situation like he's in where he hasn't really had a lot of success, just manages to find one that's off the end of the bat that floats itself into center field. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting contrast, and baseball is one of those games where you just can't get all of them. So now we see Luke Voigt as he drives that one into center field. Grichik there this time to make the play. So now one away as Voigt 0 for 2 in this game now. And so far I've been very impressed with Trent Thornton. Uh, came into this inning with, uh, you know, Almost half of the pitches that J.A. Happ had thrown so far. And uh, he's already worked himself an out. And with a man on second, a ground ball here can get him out of this thing with less than 50 pitches so far. Yeah, really good start for him thus far. Although this is his second time through the order. So we'll see what he can do. Although against the 1-2-3 hitters, he was able to get them out back in the third and 3 up, 3 down. We'll see what he can do now as he enters kind of the more middle to lower part of the lineup. As it's Mike Talkman who had a single in the second. He's in a 1-0 count now. Here's the pitch. That one is driven into deep right field. If it's fair, it's gone. And that one will sail foul. That was a close one there. Talkman looking to stay hot. He missed a home run that would have cut this lead in half by about a foot as that ball was ripped down the right field line but just couldn't tuck itself inside the foul pole. Yeah, so Trent Thornton saved there. That would have changed the game a lot. And then he gets the strikeout swinging on Talkman, his 50th pitch. His fourth strikeout of the game, so bottom fourth, two away now. Great job for Thornton thus far. And baseball can be so cruel. Talkman misses a home run and two RBIs by about a foot and then misses a ball by about a foot as that swing looked ugly, trying to make up for the missed opportunity. And that grimace after he swung and missed tells you all you need to know for Talkman as he walks back to the dugout with nothing to show for some very hard contact. And so it'll be Miguel Andahar, who hit a single in the second. He's DHing once again today. And he drives that 0-1 pitch foul, make things 0-2 with two away. Some solid contact from the Yankees, but doesn't really matter unless it keeps itself in between those white chalk lines. So Andahar, you know, he's 25 years old, primarily plays third. As he drives that one into left field, and the play will be made. So the DH Andahar flies out. So after a leadoff single, Thornton gets through the fourth and it remains a 4 nothing game here in the Bronx. Your attention please. Hello everyone and welcome back now as we see Jonathan Loisiga in his second appearance of the season and uh, second appearance this series. He pitched yesterday. 
He did, and uh, on his first pitch of the season, he ended up surrendering a solo home run to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, but as we mentioned earlier in this series, Loisaga is a guy who's sort of fighting for that fifth rotation spot. And with a poor performance from Montgomery yesterday and a, another poor performance from Hap, Loisaga might find his way into the starting rotation when this series is done. Yeah, you make a really good point there about the rotation for the Yankees kind of faltering here. We saw Jordan Montgomery only go four yesterday, and he surrendered uh, you know, some, some hits and some runs that he probably shouldn't have. A tough start for him. And now Jay Happ only goes four, surrenders four. So you know, it'll be interesting to see what Loisaga can do today. And he went three-plus yesterday. Yeah, and he did, and he's got a good three-pitch mix, fastball, slider, changeup. Works very well off of that overpowering fastball with a slider that really finds its way uh, into the left-handed hitters and breaks hard away from righties. So we saw yesterday Jordan Montgomery went four innings, allowed six hits, five earned. So again, allowing way too many runs early in the game for Aaron Boone and Yankees fans liking. So... Jonathan Loisaga, we saw him yesterday, and now in a very similar position today as Hap is able to only go four, surrendered four. So we see the Jays being really able to get to the starting pitchers here uh, in the second two games of this series. As that one is driven into left field, looks like Talkman has a read on it. He ranges slightly to his right and makes the play to retire the leadoff runner here. And the reality of it is, if you can knock the starter out of a game early, the middle of a bullpen is never where... Uh, pitching staff is the strongest you know it's those number one number two starters in the rotation and that setup and that closer role is where you're going to face the most difficulty so if you can bounce a starter like the Jays have done in these last two games you're going to find a lot of success and Gurriel Jr. who struggled so far in this series uh, with a reliever in again is going to try to look to pick things up and keep the day going for the Blue Jays yeah 0 for 2 on the day as he takes that first pitch strike from Loisica just in that bottom outside corner. So I think for Loisaga here, I, I don't know if he goes another three. I mean, to be fair, he's in just his second appearance, but he went three innings yesterday. It'll be interesting to see how long Aaron Boone leaves Loisaga in, uh, especially depending on how he fares in the next inning, uh, next couple innings here. As a natural starter, Loisaga obviously can throw 80, 90 pitches in an appearance, but starting cold as he's done in these last two days has no positive effect on your arm because you're used to throwing, you know, uh, as, as hard as you can for, you know, 80, 90 times in a game. But he only threw about 50, 60 pitches, and Boone might be asking the same of him again, and that's not going to do great for a, for a young arm. And just one run allowed for the Loisaga yesterday off of a Vlad Guerrero Jr. home run. And it was the very first pitch that he threw this season, Loisaga. So not the uh, nicest greeting to 2020, but he was able to figure things out after that. As that one's ground over to second, and the play is made by LeMahieu. So two retired now as we have two outs for the Jays. And nobody on for Vlad Guerrero Jr., who hit a three-run homer in the first, but the Jays up 3-0, and then struck out swinging in the third. Yeah, and home runs in back-to-back -back days, as we've mentioned at nauseum. Loisaga's first pitch of the season was cranked by Vladimir Guerrero Jr., and he's had success against him so far, but not exactly seen all of Loisaga's stuff. Oh, that's out. Yeah, you're right about that. Now a 1-0 count to the number four hitter, playing third today. He's played some... He's made some good defensive plays in this game as well. Guerrero, not routine, but nonetheless, some good ones. And that one is swung and missed on there, that low pitch from Loisaga, so it's a 1-1 one -one count. And you got to wonder what someone like Trent Thornton can do in this game. He's been able to keep the Yankees off the scoreboard as that one's hit over to short Torres slides and makes the play. So the 3-up, 3-down for Loisaga here to start his outing in the fifth. And we'll see Urshela, Frazier, and LeMahieu up next against Thornton in the bottom of the fifth here in the Bronx. Hello everyone and welcome back. 
to Yankee Stadium. As we'll see, Gio Urshela hit next, the former Cleveland Indian, the former Toronto Blue Jay. <laughs> he was with the Blue Jays for a couple months after being traded to them in May of 2018, and the Yankees purchased him in August of that same year. Urshela goes on to hit 21 homers in his first full season in the bigs with the Yankees last season. Kind of came out of nowhere, playing third in the absence of Andahar last season. Starts at third again today, and he popped out to first in the second. Yeah, and a great start to the uh, the year last year for him, but he's sitting on a goose egg so far in this series. Hasn't been able to get on base and makes pretty good contact there to Drury, but it'll be no problem for him, and it's going to be a long walk back to the dugout for Urshela. So the leadoff hitter is retired in this inning for Trent Thornton. As he's passed 50 pitches now, he'll take on Clint Frazier up next, the number nine hitter, who struck out in the second, but... Thornton looking really good so far, being able to command the strike zone very well, getting a lot of whiff. As that one is driven, a lined out over there to the left, Guriel to make the play, so two retired now to start things off in the fifth for Thornton. And just like that, Thornton has pitched deeper in this game than he did in his first appearance, and the big thing to notice there is the zero next to that Yankee pinstripe logo. He's done a great job keeping hitters off balance. You know, you've seen a little bit of solid contact as, as you had there from Frazier. That one ripped into left field. But, you know, there's a reason you have, a, uh, you know, all those guys behind you to make those defensive plays. And, you know, so you don't have to rely on the strikeout pitch for 27, uh, 27 outs. So DJ LeMahieu steps in with two away and nobody on. Takes the first pitch ball from Thornton. And here's the pitch. That one low and inside, and that'll be swung on. So it's a 1-1 count as LeMahieu whiffs there, the three-time gold glover, and he takes that pitch inside once again, but it's a ball. So he swung and missed on the last inside pitch. Thornton comes back with an identical one, and LeMahieu takes this time for a ball. So it's a 2-1 to one count now. Thornton trying to retire three straight batters here in this inning. And That'll be six straight in total as he allowed a leadoff single in the fourth but got the next three batters out. 8-9-1 in this inning. He's got the 8-9 hitters out. Let's see if he can get the one as well. And he does. That pitch right up the middle. Taken for strike three. So three up, three down in this inning for Thornton as he's dealing. We head to the sixth inning. It remains a 4-0 ball game in the Bronx. Well, everyone, and welcome back as we see Randall Grichik step in. And he hit a double in his last at back to lead off the fourth. Ended up coming around to score, and now he drives that one into deep left field. Talkman ranging back. He's at the warning track, and he makes the play. So that one just about out of here, but instead it's a leadoff flyer. And Grichik took his last stat bat, uh, drove one over basically the same spot, managed to put one off the wall, gets that one onto the warning track, and, you know, it doesn't get uh, as easy here at Yankee Stadium um, with that short porch. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, lot of ground that's made up with some uh, spectators sitting out there in those seats. So, you know, if he, if, if he wasn't going to get it there, I doubt he gets that out of any other ballpark, but... Grichik's going to be happy with the contact he made nonetheless. Yeah, and we've seen Grichik make very heavy contact to left in his last two plate appearances uh, and just missing a homer both times. So he's definitely got a beat on both these pitchers, Hap and Loisiga, Loisiga rather. And it'll be interesting to see uh, how he fares uh, later on in this game if he gets another chance. But it's an 0-2 catch to Oscar Hernandez, who's 0-2. On the game, struggling a bit in this series. And he's in a one-two count to the last to get with one away. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss there. A strikeout for Loisaga and another strikeout for Hernandez. Uh, two away in the sixth. The first base, Hernandez, as we mentioned yesterday, is one of those three outcome headers. If he's not driving the ball out of the yard, he's probably not driving the ball at all. It's going to find its way into the catcher's mitt. And that's another walk back to the dugout for him after a strikeout. So that makes things what, 0 for 11 this series for Hernandez DHing today. And it's clear that Montoya wants his bat in the lineup because you know we've seen the potential of Hernandez. He had a hot start in the Red Sox and Red Series, just struggling on the road here. 
as Drury steps in, and it's an 0-2 count to him now. Alaska quickly working ahead. Looking for another strikeout, and he gets it. That one paints the inside corner of the plate. So 3-3 three three down for Loisica here in the sixth. Six up, six down into this outing. And we head to the bottom of the sixth in the Bronx. It remains 4-0 Jays. And welcome back to the Virtual Jays Network. Jackson Farrell alongside Liam Crothers. It's 4-0 Blue Jays in the bottom of the sixth here in the third and final game of this series against the Yankees here in Yankee Stadium. Gardner 0 for 2 on the day. In this season, 5 for 25. So a bit of a cold start. Again, small sample size. And this is a guy, he's a veteran. He does a lot more than just what he can do at the plate. And uh, lots to offer for this veteran to this ball club. Yeah, and for sure, and we've you know discussed before the presence that he has in the locker room and can do just about everything. Obviously, he's getting up there in age. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Yankee management does when his contract is up this season, but I know there's going to be a lot of Yankee fans that are going to be sad to see him go if he doesn't get re-signed in the offseason. He's been a Yankee his whole career. It's his 13th season. He's played over 1,500 games in the pinstripes. And he's in a 2-1 count to Thornton now as he swings and misses there. He opens up the count at 2. But he was also a gold glover in 2016 and an all-star in 2015. There's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on end. Fouled off there. Count remains 2-2. Thornton just 65 pitches here through five innings as he's starting the bottom of the sixth. I've loved his stuff so far today. He's had these hitters off balance, changing spots. Hasn't been predictable. As you can see, he gets Gardner to pop up on a pitch. Jansen will make the play. And I'm just been... So, so impressed with the way Thornton has bounced back from that start he had in his first go-around. He's held the Yankees scoreless so far. As that'll be a pop-up for Gardner, caught by Jansen. So now one away as Glaber Torres steps in. Four for nine on the series with a couple RBI. He had a single in the first. He grounds that one up over to second. Biggio arranges to his right, makes the play to retire Torres. So two away now and nobody on. That's a big out there. His Torres is a guy who's one of those spark plugs. As a young player on a team like this, if he can get on and get a rally going, you know, this Yankee lineup is just going to keep on chugging, especially with the middle of the order coming up after him. That's a very, very important out for Thornton here. Exactly. He's doing a good job against the top and middle part of this Yankees lineup. And now he'll see Gary Sanchez, the number four hitter, clean up today. And he had a leadoff single in the fourth, but a slow start to the season for him in a 1-1 count now. And that one taken just on the bottom part of the strike zone. So Thornton gets ahead. Again, just 70 pitches now in the sixth for him against Sanchez. Now the 27-year-old, his fifth year in the bigs. The two-time All-Star swings and misses there. For the strikeout, so three up, three down. Once again in this inning for Thornton, nine straight batters out as we head to the seventh in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention. And now we'll see Luis Sessa for the first time this season. And last season as a reliever, 81 innings. Uh, and, you know, he looked great last season, obviously, in a very important bullpen arm this season for the Yankees. At least he should be in 2020. But I guess we'll see, as most bullpens in Major League Baseball are still a work in progress at this point. And Sessa gets his very first appearance uh, in game number 10, so a little late for his first inning of work. But he'll get it now in the seventh to relieve Loisaga, Jonathan Loisaga, who... I mean, did a great job. It went two innings strong and had six up, six down. Uh, I wonder, we may, we may be considered him coming out for a third, but I guess, you know, with all his work yesterday and today, you got to get him some rest as well. Oh, that one's drilled into deep right field. Left field, rather. Will it stay fair? Oh, my goodness. That was so close. And Danny Jansen, the hottest hitter arguably in baseball at the moment, almost gets his third home run in two days. Man, that was close, wasn't it? 
th threw everything off track. If that ball was gone, I'd just continue the incredible story that Jansen's weaving for himself right now. That one's into center, and Gardner makes the play, but Jansen, prior to that, was one for one with a single and a walk, and just about <laughs> hit a bomb in this inning, but instead he'll fly out to center. As Anthony Alford steps into what has been an already eventful seventh inning. And Alford 0 for 2 in, or I should say, uh, yes, 0 for 2 in the day. He had a strikeout in the second. One and one. And it's a 1 1 count now. Cecil's one of those guys that is going to have some trouble finding work in the major leagues because. His stuff isn't really good enough to be a closer, but he's not one of those guys that can give you a ton of innings. And, you know, it's going to be in spot situations like this where he's coming in and mop up roles or if you need maybe one or two outs. Uh, Sessa is the guy that you're going to turn to. A 4-11 ERA last season. He's definitely trying to make his case to Aaron Boone in this early season that he's a guy that he can be relied on. He's got the first two hitters out that he's faced in this Blue Jays lineup. Should mention Alfred 0 for 2, but had a fielder's choice in the fourth and was able to reach. Uh, but now he flies out to right, so it'll be Bo Bichette who fouls off past the first base side. It's a 1 1 count to the leadoff hitter, who is 1 for 3 on the day with a single, a strikeout, and a ground out. See what we can do now against Sessa as he swings on that off speed pitch. Whoo, that one was able to drop late. And here's the one-two pitch from Sessa. Swing and a miss there. He gets Bichette on the strikeout. So three up, three down in the seventh for Luis Sessa in his first inning of work this season. As we stretch here in the Bronx, it's 4 nothing Jays. And welcome back to Yankee Stadium on the Virtual Jays Network. It's 4-0 Blue Jays. My name is Jackson Farrow. I'm joined in the broadcast booth by Liam Crothers. And we see Trent Thornton now go out for his seventh inning of work. And he's continuing to progress through the, th the lineup the third time through the lineup, through the order, I should say, as he throws a first pitch strike to Luke Voigt. Uh, you know, but Liam, now the middle part of the lineup, it doesn't get any easier as he's got Voight, Talkman, and Andahar up next. Yeah, no, not at all. As, uh, Thornton, his problem in his last start was that his second time through the order, he was attacking ha uh, hitters the same way that he was in the first, and they started to adjust. But the key to his game so far has been that he's keeping hitters off balance. He's not letting uh, the hitters get into his head. And we see it there as he delivers a three-pitch strikeout to Luke Voigt, his seventh strikeout of the game now in his seventh inning of work. And that one, you see the first two pitches were kind of breaking balls low that he got Voigt to swing on. And then the swing-happy Voigt decides to try to take a dig at that far outside slider. I mean, Thornton and Jansen probably didn't think he was going to bite at that one, but he does. So a leadoff strikeout in this inning as we see Mike Talkman at the plate now. Yeah, and most battery mates will agree that on an 0-2 count, you're allowed what's called a waste pitch. You know, you make a pitch that's not really close to the zone. If he swings at it, then good. If he doesn't swing at it, there's no big issue because you're still up. But, uh, you know, Thornton gets a bit of a gift there from Voigt, who swings at that breaking ball. Talkman flies out into right, Alfred, to make the play. Now, <laughs> in the last, in the fourth, the last time we saw Talkman, man, he delivered an absolute drive. Took Thornton for a spin out to right, but just fouled it off. And then the next pitch swings and misses and strikes out. Uh, and he flies out to right in that at bat. So two away, nobody on. As Thornton managing this inning really well so far, I'll see Miguel Andahar, the DH. One for two in the day. 
And here's the 0-1 pitch. That one is swung on back up the middle. Biggio will get there. Ranges then throws. What a defensive play. Wow, Kevin Biggio playing some great defense. And Trent Thornton, three up, three down here as we head to the eighth inning in the Bronx. And welcome back, as it's still 4-0 Jays, and if you're just tuning in, Vlad Guerrero Jr. put the Jays up 3-0 in the first off of a three-run homer of Jay Happ, who only went four innings. And Randall Grichuk doubled in the fourth, and then Drury singled for him to come around and score. So it's a 4-0 ball game, and Trent Thornton's been excellent through seven. Uh, and He's retired his last, let's see, 3-6-9. Oh, my goodness. He's his last three, six, nine, twelve batters he's gotten out, so he's looked great. And now we see Kevin Biggio go against Luis Sessa, who's in for his set, second inning of work in this game. And Biggio, by the way, coming off an excellent defensive play to end the seventh. He was ranging to his right on a ball that was kind of up the middle, and it was going pretty quickly as well from Miguel Andahar. But Kevin Biggio fields and jumps and makes the play. And is able to play some good defense as he grounds that one over to third. Urshela fields it and will not be able to make the play. So it's an infield base hit for Biggio, who all of a sudden has made some great plays here in this one. I've been really impressed with Biggio so far in this game. And his first at-bat shortened up and took one into left field. Bit of an excuse me swing there, but with the shift as heavy as it was, drops that thing onto the infield dirt near that third base bag, and he's able to get on with his good speed. He's been doing it with the bat, been doing it with the glove. I've really liked what I've seen from Kevin Biggio. Biggio two for four in this one. And as I was mentioning, that defensive play, a little Jeter-esque in Jeter's old ballpark as the pickoff attempt back to first is to no avail. But it's a 1-0 count. Luis Sessa looked great in his last inning of work. Three up, three down to the 8-9 one hitters and retiring the bottom of this Jays lineup is no easy feat uh, at least in this series and so we'll see what he can do now after surrendering a leadoff single now in a 2-0 count against Guriel Jr. that one's fouled off now 2-1 and he worked very well off of that overpowering fastball with a, a drop off the table breaking ball but got himself in a little bit of a situation here if he can get a ground ball though he'll be in a good spot driven to left center Gardner ranging back towards the warning track and makes the play and delivers a bomb right back in, hits the cutoff man. So Biggio remains at first, and a deep hit or a deep uh, drive by Guriel Jr. is caught in left center. A good defensive play by Gardner there. We're going to flash back to what Vlad Guerrero Jr. did in the first. This has been the story so far, this three-run shot uh, to kick off this game. The Jays have been riding that, uh, that hot bat of Guerrero so far this year, but... Uh, just to take a moment to talk about Brett Gardner, you know, we've mentioned how important that Glaber Torres has been in this game and, and Talkman has been in the series. That one's fouled off. It's been very Gardner-esque uh, for him in this series. You know, he's done a little bit with the bat and he's shown up with the glove, but he isn't that guy who's that centerpiece. And I think that might be where Gardner likes to be. He doesn't want to be the guy in the spotlight, obviously with the lights as bright as they are here in New York. Uh, he's found that role very comfortable over the last couple of years. Such an experienced defensive player, and you know he's clearly a leader in that room now with the Yankees. But I think also just leading by example with his all the work he puts in. As that one is flown out to left, Talkman has a beat on it, makes the play. So Guerrero Jr. is retired and a fly out to left. So two away with a runner on first in the form of Kevin Biggio, as Luis Sessa about to deal his 25th bit pitch. And it'll be to uh, Randall Grichuk, who's one for three on the day. Yeah, it comes in hitting 407. Grichuk has been hot. He's been finding extra bases quite a few times this season. He's got five doubles, that fifth one coming earlier in today's game. Swing and a miss there. And it's an 0-1 count now to Grichuk, the center fielder. And he's looked great to start this season. He came around to score, as I've mentioned, in the fourth. And we'll see what he can do now against Sessa, who's looking great. Only allowed... One hit in what has been six 
batter's face, now his seventh. And that one's fouled off to right, an 0-2 count. Yeah, and that, uh, that hit's not going to do him justice, as in the box score, you know, a line drive and a, a blooper look the same. Right about that, and that one, slider outside, looked appetizing for a moment, but Gritchick with an excellent take, especially in an 0-2 count, so it's 1-2. And a swing and a miss there. Sessa gets a strikeout. So after allowing a leadoff single, he gets the next three batters out. Some good bullpen work from Sessa, but it remains a 4-0 ball game. We head to the bottom of the eighth in the Bronx. And welcome back to Yankee Stadium. We see Trent Thornton come out now in the eighth inning. He's gone through seven strong, allowing zero runs and just 78 pitches. And now it makes a lot of sense for Charlie Montoyo, Blue Jays manager, to leave Trent Thornton in this one. Give your young starter some confidence. But also, uh, he's looked great. His pitch count's nice and low for this time of the game. And he's got... Uh, three righties coming up as well. As that one is driven to the left field, and it'll get down for a base hit just behind the extended arm of Guerrero Jr. and in front of Guriel Jr. in left. So a leadoff base hit for Gio Urshela, the number eight hitter. Man, and that's got to feel like a monkey off the back of Urshela. Doesn't matter how you get him when you're in a uh, when you're in a bit of a bit of a rocky start so far as he's been in this series. You know, just floats one over the over the head of Guerrero and. As he's standing on first, you know he's got a smile that's about a mile wide. And now we see Clint Frazier step in, who is 0 for 2 in the day with a strikeout in the lineups. Lineout. Slow start to the season for him. He's hitting number 9 and trying to potentially start a rally for the Yankees here. They have a runner on first, nobody out. Thornton now really needs this out, especially against righty. You do not want to go to the top of this lineup, which can be a very dangerous top end of the lineup with a couple runners on. Am I right? Mm, definitely. And you can't look past this guy, though, that's standing in the box. This Frazier will take you deep if you make a mistake. Swing and a miss there. It's a one-two count. And you know what? Clint Frazier reminds me of a, of a Yankee, a former Yankee in the form of Chase Headley. You remember Chase Headley, the third baseman who came over from San Diego? Looks like him, kind of stands like him in the box, and you wonder if maybe he can have some success like Headley did here in the Bronx. And it's a one-two count. I know they play different positions, but I just I, I look at them at the plate. I look at the way they stand the way they swing, and there's a lot of similarities to me. Two-two count to Frazier as he takes that low offering from Thornton, so it's a full count now. Well, it's definitely an interesting comparison, but I think if you're Clint Frazier, I think you'd like to be remembered a little bit more favorably in Yankees lore than Chase Headley. <laughs> well, he's going to have to earn that, isn't he? A full count now for the young right fielder. And a drive in a deep right. That'll go into the seats. So for Trent Thornton, an excellent art outing for him. Um, you know, giving Charlie Montoyo not too much to worry about yet. But this is a very important at-bat here. As that one misses high, and that'll be a walk. So the first two runners, the eight, nine hitters in this lineup for the Yankees reach. So start things off in the eighth. So now we'll go to the top of the order for the Yankees. It'll be LeMayhew up next, who's 0 for 3 on the day with a strikeout in the fifth. But he's got a real opportunity with first and second and nobody out to potentially mount a comeback here against Thornton. With the tying run on deck as LeMayhew steps into the box here, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the expression that uh, he's due. DJ LeMahieu is a guy who played very well for the Yankees last year and historically has been a great player when crunch time comes around, and this is definitely a situation where the Yankees need something from him. Fouls off the first pitch out to right field, so it's an 0-1 count now. Throwing up to 87 pitches. This will be number 88 on the day for him as he deals. And that one grounded right back up the middle. Biggio, oh, and Biggio misses the ball. He had a chance to make an incredible play. Had his eye on the base rather than the ball. It's an error. Bases are loaded now. Yeah, and that's just a situation where a young infielder, there's so much going on in that situation. You're thinking about fielding the ball, thinking about going to second, thinking about the runner that's bearing down on you. And Biggio, in an attempt to make two outs, ends up having the bases loaded here for Thornton as he's going to be pulled. So that'll end the day for Trent Thornton. Still an incredible start, but things really 
changing in the eighth as the bottom of the lineup is able to reach and then LeMahieu reaches and loads the bases off of a Kevin Biggio error as we're going to see Thomas Pannone against the lefty Brett Gardner here and Pannone and it'll be his fourth appearance and he's looked great he's got a couple strikeouts hasn't allowed an earned run yet in two and two-thirds innings pitched so we'll see what the lefty can do against the left-handed outfielder Brett Gardner uh, but you know on that last play Liam Kevin Biggio oh, he's had a good day so far too he had made an excellent defensive play in the seventh but now in the eighth, he had a chance to get the double play and really make some hay in this inning defensively. Uh, but just eyes on the base rather than the ball. We talked about what's going to be the key for Biggio to have success earlier, uh, but we were talking about with the bat. Uh, Biggio not really known for stellar defense. He's definitely impressed us with, uh, as you mentioned, a Jeter-esque play uh, earlier in this game. But that's uh, something that Joe Panic was brought in to sort of, you know, help iron out. It's that second base defense on that right side of the infield that Biggio needs the most work with. And Joe Panic with an error this series as well. That was back in game number one on Thursday. So it'll be Thomas Pannone against Brett Gardner, who's 0 for 3 on the day, but we've been talking about him all game, that vet, right? And he gets a hit when he needs to, and what a time it would be for him as he represents the tying run. He's a lefty with a short porch out in right. And Pannone, a guy who does give up the long ball from time to time, but very important here. He's got a great opportunity. He's had a good start to the year out of the pen. So we'll see now if he can continue that. He's got a really tough situation with the bases loaded and Gardner at the play. It's a 2-1 count. Here's the pitch. That one's fouled off. Evens up the count at 2. Yeah, and this 2-2 offering from Pannone is going to decide where the rest of this ball game goes. You can either get two quick outs here on a ground ball or you can end up having this game be tied with one swing of the bat. That one misses low, a full count now. So, you know, if, if you're Gardner at the plate, your approach is, you know, just trying to survive. But if, if you know that pitch is going to be outside, take, because a walk will score a run here. So Pannone in a very tough situation. Here's the payoff pitch. That one swung on up over to first, and the play is made. And that'll be actually a line out. So Gardner lines right over to Drury at first, who makes a really good play, and none of the runners can move. And we're going to get a good look at this as this ball was lined right to Drury and Ooh. oh my goodness, scoops that thing off of the off of the dirt as LeMahieu jumps. That is no easy play. I bet you Drury might have lost that thing right off the bat as LeMahieu was in his way, but a very, very good play as now with one out, it'll be Glaber Torres, but the bases are still loaded. So a line out there for Gardner, but Pannon... It only gets more difficult now. He's got Gleyber Torres, who this season is hitting 429 with runners in scoring position. He represents the tying one. He's one for three in this game. He's had a great series, and a righty against a lefty here. Arguably the best hitter in this Yankees lineup today, and it's a 1-1 count now. Yeah, that Drury play defensively was excellent. It's almost like he reached between LeMahieu's legs to make that play, and that was just about on the dirt, but a... Great play from Drury. Saves what could have been a, a couple runs and, and gets the out. So now 2-1. to one. And Pannon, again, in a very similar position. Trying to, he's Technically, he's one pitch away from getting this inning, but it doesn't feel like it right now. Here's the pitch. That one low and inside. It's a 3-1 count to Torres. Yeah, and Pannon's got to come after him here. you got nowhere to put him. Uh, but I think if you're Thomas Pannon here... If you miss, it's not the end of the world. You only give up one run, and it's Gary Sanchez, who's struggled mightily so far in the series, who will come up after him. That's a good point you make. That one just misses outside, although that one could have gone either way. The ump gives it to the Yanks. And they score their first run of the game off of a walk, a bases loaded one-out walk to Glaber Torres. And now we'll see Gary Sanchez, the cleanup hitter, come up to the plate. One for three on the day with a single in the first. Hasn't had a great start to the year, so Pannon with a chance here to get an out. How much needed out? And it's interesting that Charlie Montoya decided to go with Thomas Pannon. Uh, Bass is the setup man usually, and coming in here with the bases loaded as they were up for, that is a hold situation, and it's usually a, a time when you want to get your setup guy into the ballgame, but it's given Pannon a chance here to prove his worth. I guess one reason would be because Pannon 
the lefty came in to take on Gardner lefty, but yeah, he's got a bunch of righties now and some tough righties, so a tough situation for Panone as it's a 1-0 count to Sanchez. Now he's still, as I mentioned, one pitch away from getting out of this inning as a double play would let them escape, the Blue Jays escape from this inning as it's 4-1, the go-ahead run at the plate. And Sanchez swings through that one, so it's a 1-1 count now. Yeah, and this is the nature of baseball. As a left-handed pitcher, you're not going to be able to face one guy and get out of there, so you've got to make sure that you're locating your stuff well. That one's driven into deep center field. Gritchuk ranging back. It looks like he's underneath it, and he is, and he makes the play, makes the throw, but one run will tag and score. So LeMahieu comes in to score. Now first and second, two away as Luke Voigt steps up to the plate. It's a 4-2 to two ball game here. The Yankees tack on another run and cut the deficit in half in this inning. And the first pitch to Voigt in there for a strike. Yeah, and with the Yankees right behind the Jays in the uh, standings this year, they're a game and a half back. These games matter, regardless of what people tell you. These games in April are just as important as those games in September. Now we see Luke Voigt in a 1-1 count. Should mention it was Frazier who came around to score rather than LeMayhew. So two runs scored for the Yankees in this inning. It's a 1-2 count. Panone trying to escape. Here's the pitch to Voigt. That one gets in there for a strike. That curveball working the inside corner. It's been called all day. This time the Jays get the call. So Panone allows a couple runs in this inning after... Inheriting bases loaded, but he gets out of it. It's 4-2 Jays. We head to the ninth. Your attention, please. Welcome back as we see Jonathan Holder enter the game now. In the ninth, he was pitching a couple games this season. Looked pretty good. Three innings, no earned. No runs, earned runs allowed, I should say. A couple, four strikeouts for him, and now he'll have Hernandez, Drury, and Jansen, six, seven, eight hitters for the Jays in the ninth as he tries to keep this lead at two. And if you just missed the last inning, well, you missed a lot as the Yankees were able to load the bases with nobody out. Thomas Pannone comes in. Uh, gets Gardner to line out. Then Torres gets a walk, which gives one run to the Yankees, makes it a 4-1 game. And then Gary Sanchez flies out to center, gets another RBI after Clint Frazier was able to tag and score. So it's a 4-2 ball game. Trent Thornton went seven strong, but got lit up a little bit in the eighth. And so I, I assume we'll see Ken Giles in the ninth if the score remains the same. But that's a big if as Teoscar Hernandez at the plate. Hits that one right back up the middle into the shift, though, as LeMay Hughes there and makes the play one away. And you mentioned Giles, who's warming in the pen. Le uh, he's tied for the American League lead in saves, as he's already got five on this young season. Uh, did pitch yesterday. Wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, try to work through the bottom of the ninth quickly. But again, that is a big if, especially with how prolific this uh, bottom half of the order has been for the Blue Jays this season. Right about that, here's Brandon Drury. One for three on the day. Part of the trade package that brought Jay Happ to New York. As we see Adam Ottavino and Zach Britton getting warm in case Holder runs into any issues here. It's a 1-0 count to Drury, the first baseman today for the Jays. Swings and misses there, he evens up the count at one. And here's the 1-1 pitch now, that one's driven. In a deep, or shallow left, I should say. Looks like Talkman has a beat on it, and he does. Two away now. Yeah, and that ball was hit way up in the air. I thought off the bat it was going to get a little bit deeper, and Talkman would have had to range a couple steps backwards. But Drury gets under that ball, and that's a good job by Holder so far to keep this lead right where it is. But this will be a big test as Danny Jansen, as we mentioned earlier, probably the hottest hitter in baseball, is going to look to give the Jays at least one more run. And Jansen, you're right about that. We were just talking about that. In the last inning, he just missed what would have been his third home run in two games uh, earlier in this one, back in the seventh. But he ended up flying out to, to center in that at-bat. Still one for two in the day with a walk, and yesterday he had two solo shots. 
Trump, the Jays win that one. And now with two away, he's trying to add to this Jays lead. And they are three outs away from taking the, the last two games of this series as they dropped the first game by a score of 5 nothing. Came back yesterday to win 6-4, and now it's 4-2. And, you know, as we're going to head to the bottom of the ninth, soon here we're going to see Ken Giles come out potentially for the save. Full count to Jansen, though, with Anthony Alford on deck. Jansen hitting eighth today. He's been in the middle lineup, but he's moved his way down for this series, although it looks like Montoya may have to move him back to the middle, even top end of this lineup, the way he's been hitting. Full count, two away, nobody on for Jansen. Against Jonathan Holder, the reliever for the Yankees. Here's the pitch. Driven down the third baseline and foul. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, the race in the AL East, very tight so far. The Boston Red Sox, who the Jays swept in the opening series, have battled their way back to a 5-5 five and five record. That one fouled off once again down the third baseline. Yeah, and then you get the Jays, who are 7-2. and two. They look great. And slow starts from Baltimore and Tampa have given the Jays even more leverage in this division early on here. As Jansen takes a two-out walk, his second walk of the game. And I hate to question the integrity of a major league umpire, but when a guy is going as good as uh, Jansen has been with the bat, sometimes you get maybe an extra inch or so off the plate in both directions. Uh, and the umpire has been calling the inside pitch, so it's not a surprise to see him uh, give up that ball on the outside. So we see Alfred step in and take a first pitch strike right up the middle. 0-1 count now as Alfred is 1-3 for three on the day. Uh, or 0 for 3, I should say, but he reached uh, earlier in the fourth on a fielder's choice. He was able to advance the runners there. So Alfred again trying to work his way in the lineup in an outfield battle here in Serrano. Um, but it, it looks as of now that Alfred's going to be a fourth outfielder. Good defensively, good range, good arm. And he strikes out there on three pitches, swinging at that high heat from Holder. So... The score remains 4-2. to two. It's a two-run ball game as we head to the bottom of the ninth. It's closing time for the final time in this series in the Bronx. Well, I want to welcome back. So now we'll see the man of the hour, Ken Giles. And we saw him yesterday as well, in which he got the save. So he's got five saves on the year. He's looked great. He's been perfect in that regard. Hopefully I just didn't jinx him. Uh, but we're going to see him take on the six, seven, eight hitters. A lefty and two righties as he sees Mike Talkman, Miguel Andahar, and Gio Urshela. As Talkman fouls off that first pitch. And so a win today would push the Jays to 8-2. and two. Now after the, now that's a big if. Uh, and they would head to Philly uh, to start a series tomorrow, a two-game interleague series against the Phillies. So they'll see Aaron Nola. we got a big matchup tomorrow, actually. It's Aaron Nola against Hyunjin Ryu. So that'll be fun. And they'll see Bryce Harper and Riss Hoskins and everyone else there. And then the Yankees head are actually going to stay in New York to take on the Baltimore Orioles in a four-game set. As Talkman fouls off that high offering, it's a one-two count to the lefty. Yeah, and if the uh, Yankees end up dropping uh, this series to the Jays, it's going to be a, a bit of a pick-me-up as they play the Orioles, who are currently 2-7 and seven on the season. Yeah, a chance to kind of redeem themselves a little bit if they do end up dropping 2-3. of three. Again, a big if on that as this game is not over. So Ken Giles now will do his fifth pitch of this appearance. So once you count, and Talkman swings over that one. So two strikeouts on the day for Talkman, the left fielder, and one away now in the ninth. Yeah, well, he can talk the talk, and he's going to walk the walk back to the dugout. We get a look at Trent Thornton's line here. Seven innings pitched, five hits, two runs. Only one of those earned as Pannone did allow a run to come in to score. Uh, one walk and seven strikeouts. He was very, very impressive today. A much better performance than his first go around this season. A very good start, and you know what? The the eighth inning was tough for him. He got into a bit of a jam, uh, but you know what? He did a great job, regardless of that. Getting through, uh, you know, one through seven, the third 
time through the lineup, which is something that, again, a young pitcher would love to do. And he was able to do it today. As that one is swung on and missed there, so it's a 1-1 count to Miguel Andahar, the DH. One for three on the day, grounded out to second in his last at-bat. It was an incredible defensive play from Biggio. 2-1 count now to Andahar as he tries to get on base and start a bit of a rally here in New York. They need one. That one misses outside. It's a good count for Andohar. Hitters count 3-1. Yeah, and Urshela's on deck, and uh, Giles has had a little bit of uh, an issue so far this season with control. He's almost had as many strikeouts as he had walks, and in a 3-1 count, he's got to look to avoid letting a man get on here. That one's drilled foul. Makes this count full. And yesterday we saw Andujar get a single against Giles. And Urshela also got a walk. And we see another single. <laughs> Speaking into existence there, Farrell, why don't you? As that one is singled into right field. So a one-out base hit for Andujar. And the Yankees starting to get into business here as the tying run comes to the plate in the ninth. Yeah, and we saw in yesterday's game, Ken Giles uh, worked himself into a bit of an issue, but... Uh, was able to get Clint Frazier to line out to right field. It was a loud out uh, to Teoscar Hernandez. And with a man on here, he's got to make some good pitches to get Urshela out. Starts off with the first pitch ball high to Urshela. One for three on the day with a single and a run scored back in the eighth. And we'll see what he can do here. The number eight hitter, a great opportunity for the third baseman. He was battling someone like Tyler Wade for that spot. And Good opportunity for him as that one gets away from Jansen, but he keeps it in front of him. Andrew Har not able to advance there, but it's a 2 0 count to Urshela, who will try to add some offense here for the Yankees and potentially mount a comeback. 2 0 count to Urshela, trying to get something going. As that one misses high, now a 3 0 count. Giles getting into a little bit of trouble here. And look who looms on deck the man who just missed his pitch in yesterday's game against Giles. And with two men on, he represents the winning run. 3-0 count. That one in there for a strike. Some movement on that one. A great pitch just inside. So it's a 3-1 count. Yeah, and Giles known for that fastball uh, slider combo, but he can mix in a two-seamer to keep hitters off balance. It sits around 94, and that's what he got over there with. And that one is fouled down the line. Oh, that was a... Diving play from Drury there almost made the catch. That would have been incredible. It's a full count now. Regardless of if he makes that play or not, that's something that Ken Giles is really going to appreciate. Great effort on defense. Absolutely. From a guy who doesn't play there all that often. As that one is grounded up over to short. Bichette to second for one to first for two. So a double play there, and that'll wrap up this ball game. Ken Giles picks up his sixth save of the year in only 17 pitches and goes from trouble to glory as he... Wraps up this one, and the Jays take the final two games of this series after dropping the first one. So they take two of three from the Yankees. They're 8-2 eight to, two, eight and two to start this season. They swept the Red Sox in their first series, take two or three from the Reds, and now take two or three from the Yankees off of an excellent pitching display from Trent Thornton today. Yeah, and they take a firm lead atop of the AL East. Uh, as Giles walks himself into trouble, but the boys turn a double, and they're going to leave the Bronx here taking this series from the uh, the boys in the pinstripes. Um, Giles hasn't been as sharp as we're accustomed to seeing so far this uh, this season, as we've seen in seasons past, but a yeah, win is a win is a win, and that's Giles' sixth save on the season. So Trent Thornton advances to 1-1 one and one on the win. I should mention he actually did pick up that loss against the Reds earlier on. Uh, Jay Happ picks up the loss, just four innings for him, six hits. Did get six strikeouts, uh, but four earned runs allowed, and three of them off of one hit. It was that Vlad Guerrero Jr. bomb. Uh, but other than that, Guerrero Jr., a pretty quiet day, one for four nonetheless. Still three RBI, so you'll take it. And ultimately, without that, the Blue Jays would not have won this game. Ken Giles picks up his sixth save of the year. And Trent Thornton, a quality start for him. He is our player of the game here on the Virtual Jays Network. Five hits, seven strikeouts, two earned, one walk in seven innings pitch. Like I mentioned, picks up the win. And now the Jays head to Philly. What's going to be the key for them to continue what has been a really hot start to the season? Well, we've seen in this series against New York and 
uh, even earlier again in the series against the Reds, the Blue Jays hitters have done a great job jumping on the starting pitchers. And if you can force a manager to go to his bullpen early in the game, in the fourth and the fifth, and even in the sixth inning, it's going to give your batters a great chance to put up some more runs. As Vlad Guerrero Jr. was the difference here with that three-run shot in the first, and it's never easy for a team at home to be playing from behind right from the offset. So if they want to have success against the Phillies and that talented rotation, which just added Zach Wheeler and got a little bit stronger, they're going to have to jump on starting pitching. So it'll be very interesting to see that two-game little interleague play as we'll see Hyunjin Ryu make his third start of the season tomorrow in Philly. So for Jackson Farrell and Liam Crothers and the Virtual Jays Network, we appreciate you joining us today to watch the Jays continue their hot start to the season. And we'll see you tomorrow, everyone, in Philadelphia. Have a good night.